Hello guys and welcome to the part 2 video. Today I will finish building the flashlight and I will test it. In the previous episode I cut all the panels. I will use a black marker now to color the edges of all the MDF boards. I think it looks better this way. I also prepared all the holes and cutouts. The panels are ready for mounting. This type of battery holders let some air pass between the lithium cells. This will cool down the cells if needed. Most of the air will come through the big hole in the back, but the battery pack will block some of that air. So I made a few more 8mm holes in the bottom panel to help cool down the LED heatsink. This step down converter is used to decrease the battery voltage to a lower and stable value for the cooling fan. The converter didn't come with standoffs, so I will add two from my kit. I will mount both converters on the side panel with some 3mm screws, which are salvaged from a broken PC power supply. Check the space between the converters and the aluminum plate, you don't want a short circuit. The fan will be mounted on the heatsink with simple wood screws. You can bend the aluminum fins if needed, so the screws can be tightened better. The aluminum panels have a big surface and will help to cool down the LED, but I need to add some thermal paste between the panels and the heatsink, for a better heat transfer. These are the fan wires, I will solder them to the step down converter output. A pair of tweezers is very useful for this project. And now the LED wires. For the battery connections I will use thicker 1.5mm wires, because when the battery voltage gets low, the step up converter will draw a lot of current from the battery. The lower the battery voltage, the higher the current draw will be. Here, for example, you can see that the step-up converter has a 12 volts input. So, to be able to power the LED with around 90 watts of power, the converter needs almost 10 amps from the power supply. But there will never be such a high current draw inside the flashlight, because the BMS protection board will not allow the battery voltage to decrease below 16.2 volts. The battery pack doesn't have a flat surface, so to place it better on the bottom panel I added some sticky foam tape. I will also use two screws with washers to fix it in position. But are these screws good enough to hold the battery pack? Yes they are. Now I will temporarily mount the last panel because I need to make some measurements. I want to install this handle, but what is the best position? We need to find the center of gravity, so I stole this makeup thingy from my fiance. The center of gravity seems to be at 11 cm from the front, but I will consider it at 10.5 cm, because it will be a little heavier in the front side after I mount the LED lens and bracket. I measured and drilled the holes for the handle, the battery indicator is next. But first let's test this 6S battery level indicator. The four LEDs turn off one by one, while the battery voltage is decreasing from 25.2 volts. Zack Pack Super Glue Gel is the best choice to stick it to the panel. This is a simple 5.5mm female connector. I will use it to connect the charger. I recently bought this cheap heat gun, which is pretty good for its price. I will mount the charging connector on the back panel. It's a little crowded back there, but that's the way I like my projects. I have a few more wires to solder. I will use my rusty trusty Romanian made soldering gun, because I'm in a hurry. The glue is dry, I can mount the handle using some 4mm screws. To turn on the flashlight I will use this simple but very powerful rocker switch.
The battery will deliver a lot of current. I can't insulate the entire BMS board, but I will cover the terminals with some electrical tape. I already soldered the switch wires, I just need to insulate them with shrink tubes. The potentiometer is next. It's a bit difficult to tighten the nut, I will use tweezers. This is the first test. The battery is discharged, but it works. I can tighten all the screws on this side. To be sure that the top of the battery pack will not move from side to side, I will stick the plastic holder to the side panel with strong sticky foam tape. Of course, some thermal paste must be added between the heatsink and the aluminum panel. Now I can tighten all the remaining screws. On the back panel I will use smaller screws because I don't want to pierce it. The last thing I need to do on the top panel is to add a knob on the potentiometer. On the back panel I will mount the protective grill with fan screws. The flashlight needs some tall rubber pads because it has venting holes on the bottom panel. Finally I can mount the LED lens. Finishing this project I can say that I'm glad and relieved that all the holes and screws fit very well. This project was not very complicated, but it had a lot of measurements and screws, that's why it took so long to finish it. And this is my 100W flashlight, what do you think? Having grey and silver panels gives it an industrial look, I like that. It also looks a bit stealthy, like it belongs in the army. The battery is almost discharged, so let's test the over discharge protection feature. It works, but that's not a surprise. This 6S BMS protection board is very good. Let's test it again and measure the battery voltage with my DIY volt ammeter. When the first cell gets down to 2.7 volts, the BMS board disconnects the battery pack. The flashlight will be charged using this 25.2 volts and 2 amps charger. 2 amps, this charger is pretty good and the voltage is rising now. The voltage reached 25.2 volts, so the charging current is decreasing now. The lithium cells are balanced by the BMS board and they are charged with a constant current constant voltage method using this charger. 380 milliamps, the charging is almost finished. It took 1 hour and 42 minutes to charge the flashlight with a 2 amps charger at a charging rate of 0.66C which is fine for this type of lithium cells. The battery is fully charged now. Let's test the dimming potentiometer. You can't really see it on camera, but it works fine. It modifies the LED voltage between 27 and 29.5 volts. This is the reason why I chose a 6S battery pack instead of 7S, because a 7S pack has a maximum voltage of 29.4 volts, and I can't dim the light using a step-up converter. Let's see the weight, 1.3 kilograms. This is not heavy considering how much metal it contains. And if my calculations are correct, it should be perfectly balanced. How's the cooling? After 10 minutes at maximum intensity it's warm. This is normal because the flashlight is sitting on the table, so the cooling air is partially blocked on the bottom panel. That means I can set the fan voltage even lower, because the fan is very noisy and I don't like that. I can't sneak up on people with my flashlight. It's a bit difficult, but I managed to adjust the converter. Almost 8 volts should be fine. I will also color in black the two screws at the top. This is the real stealth technology. Enough with the screws, let's test the flashlight. Does it really work? Let's compare it to my 5 watts flashlight. There is quite a difference, probably 20 times the difference. If you want to see how I built the 5 watts flashlight and other DIY videos, you can check out my Patreon page. 
I want to thank all my patrons for their support. But this flashlight needs to be tested in real life conditions, so let's take it outside into the darkness of the night. At the lowest light intensity it has an autonomy of 6 hours and 10 minutes, but if I use it continuously at maximum power it will last for 52 minutes. This is weird because the battery pack can deliver 64.8 watt hours of energy. The LED is using around 90 watts, so the battery should discharge faster. Probably the battery capacity got slightly bigger after several cycles. Or the current used by the LED is fluctuating and may decrease when it's powered for longer periods. So if you want to build a flashlight like this, I suggest you give it a bigger battery pack and very importantly use only good high drain lithium cells. If you enjoyed this video hit the like button, share and subscribe to my channel. Bye!